Um, so I would now like to introduce Reverend Tanamori and Elizabeth Weinberg. Uh, Reverend Tanamori, who was just featured in the video, uh, survived the atomic bombing in Hiroshima when he was eight years old. He lost both of his parents and two sisters and became a street urchin who struggled to save, stay alive by searching waste sites and garbage cans for food. Tanamori is a founder of the Silkworm Peace Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to international peace. He now lives in Berkeley, California with his guide dog, Yuki. He is the author of Hiroshima Bridge to Forgiveness. Hello everyone, um, I'm Elizabeth Weinberg with Silkworm Peace Institute and we are very honored to be here today. Um, grateful <laughs> to be with everyone and especially uh, I wanna uh, say thank you to Reverend Hanoka for sharing his testimony and that we are extremely honored to have Hibakusha and friends amongst us uh, in Northern California. We are, um, uh, we can be grateful that we have um, these uh, friends that we can that can share their testimonies with us and so and that we can listen. Um, so Silkworm Peace Institute was founded by Takashi Tanamori in 1985. Uh, he struggled for many years searching uh, his heart, uh, struggling with revenge as a son of a samurai father and family. It was his duty, uh, he was duty bound um, to seek revenge. And uh, not only that, he uh, had a burning, raging desire for revenge in his heart, which is actually what brought him to America. Um, he became a citizen. So uh, through those many years, uh, and then suddenly uh, he found forgiveness um, during an epiphany on the Bay Bridge. And it was this utter transformation of his heart from revenge to forgiveness uh, that caused him to shift the trajectory of his life and found the Silkworm Peace Institute, promoting peace through forgiveness for many years. We've worked alongside uh, for nine years as of yesterday, August 7th, uh, we met through the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance. It was said that nothing would grow in Hiroshima. There would be no new life for 70 to 75 years. And this has been the heaviest weight um, considering this since the 70th anniversary and until now culminating with the 75th. Uh, we hear the cries and the pleas of Hibakusha to the world and we must listen, this generation, succeeding generations, and all of the planet are affected by these, the issue that started back in 1945 with the first use of the atomic bombs. Um, Harold Jacobson was a scientist who's well known for having made the prediction that nothing would grow. And in fact, he actually said that nothing could live in Hiroshima or grow in Hiroshima and nothing would thrive. And uh, I'm here to testify today through this um, blessed relationship and friendship that I have for the last nine years with Reverend Tanamori. Um, that is, uh, we have found that prediction to be untrue, that um, there is resilience of life. Uh, Takashi Tanamori is truly a miracle of life. His entire life story is um, a fascinating journey, and so he will share with you. Thank you so much. Reverend Takashi Tanamori, go ahead, please. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity you have given to us, and especially commemorating the 75th anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and things that I heard the testimony I listened to, perhaps my approach to nuclear bomb may be totally different than from all the other survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki for those who are promoting peace. Oh, by the way, the gentleman at the very beginning, his name the Mr. Kaku, is that his name? Did you know in the Japanese, the term, the kaku is a reference to nuclear bomb. So I just let, let him know. His name is a nuclear bomb, the kaku, Mr. Kaku. 
So well, he must be powerful. <laughs> well, it is the most destructive power that he had by name. I just, I'm just kidding you, okay? But here is my heart regarding nuclear issues. Well, these 74 years, we promote hoping that peace is the abolition of the nuclear bomb. And I remember back in 1999, I was the city of Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. And I had a meeting. And each meeting, both mayors of the two cities had to say to me or to the public, that if we abolish the nuclear bomb, the human suffering will stop or eradicate, and there will be the peace. Because they have said it clearly, loudly, the nuclear bomb is the cause of human suffering. And just be honest with you, I stood to the face of these mayors no, the human suffering and the death, destruction we are already experienced before even the scientists ever conceived the nuclear bomb. Nuclear bomb conceived in 1942. So I said, please do not consider it as the cause of human suffering. And then I mentioned that Douglas, five-star General Douglas MacArthur's the farewell speech on the September 22, 1953. This he said, I simplified his speech. He said, I have been a professional soldier for last 52 years. I'm closing my life as soldiers. And we have done anything, everything to resolve human conflict, including the physical war between the differing nations. But he said, even the negotiation, dialogue, anything else we have done for these 52 years in his soldier life. He said, problem that we're not able to resolve the human conflict because we are dealing a wrong war. The conflict begins human heart. Therefore, in order to bring the, the conflict to create the peace, quote unquote, has to be deal on the spiritual base. That's his speech on September 22nd, 1953. And I believe with all of my heart, I concur, I agree with Douglas MacArthur's speech. And that today, I just want to be just 71st anniversary, so painful for me that tens of Thousands, millions, millions of people are promoting the peace and hoping abolishing the nuclear bomb is the means to bring the peace. But again, my understanding, my own personal understanding, it was the darkness in my heart, desire for revenge. Simply saying that, that was the cause of my suffering, my own anger, my own desire. And it is a darkness in my heart. I recognize at that point, I remember the American nurse, Mary, who was in a Modesto State California hospital. She was the one. During the four months of the period, I was a patient. She said, Tommy boy, as I was known, there is someone 
who is greater than anyone else who loved you. And I want to get to know him. Every time I saw her as a head nurse, she has repeated, although I did not understand her years later, what she meant, there is someone who loves me and I need to get to know. And did you know I sure did it? That was simply John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son and he died on the cross, buried and resurrected. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this personal salvation by trusting Christ and the word of God, then uh, Elizabeth Sun mentioned already, Epiphany on August 5th, 1985, at the 40th anniversary of Hiroshima. I was a keynote speaker. At there, I was ready to bombard Americans, anti American, anti nuke. And I was well known those there, even Mr. Kramoto, that I was the one to speak. Entire New York, entire Americans. But did you know instead that I said, please forgive me that I came to America for revenge. And I want you to know, prison Truman, even though you dropped the bomb, and the reason I know you say blankly, blankly, Jap, I remember the Pearl Harbor. That was the one more reason he used the bomb in Hiroshima. When you deal with the beast, we got to deal with the beast. That was his one more reason for use of atomic bomb. But anyway, there I was. I said, President Truman, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I was asked, American people that morning, please forgive me. My desire for revenge. Now, since then, I ask for forgiveness in the Pearl Harbor, Baton March, Korean Comfort, and the Rape of Nanki. And anyway, I just let you know that. The last word of my father's before he was taken on the September 3rd, 1945. He said, my son, you have known me as your father. I have lived my life before you and I have taught you the code of samurai. Now, would you promise to your son and to daddy? And this is the, his last word. He said, my son, greatest way to avenge your enemy is to forgive. I repeat, the greatest way to avenge your enemy to forgive. Then he always said, my son, there's one more thing. When he said that, you better pay attention. He said, after learn to forgive, then he said, learn to live for the benefits of others first. Then we all benefit. This is the simplest way to make the world a peaceful place whereby all the different people can live side by side in Hewa. Now with that in mind, I just let you know, you know all the Nagasaki Hiroshima survivors, they are passionately asking for abolition of nuclear bomb. And I'm first one to join them. But until we deal with the human heart, the darkness of human heart, one by one, 
learn to forgive whoever the enemy might be. As the Douglas MacArthur said, he's 52 years of profession as a soldier. His conclusion is that we have been fighting the wrong war or wrong way has to be deal with the spiritual. That was that. I thank you so much for this time. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Um, we'll now transition to the Q&A portion. Um, I would also like to introduce Jason Cordes and invite him to turn on his video and audio. Uh, Jason is the filmmaker of the video that we just watched. He made the video when he was 18 years old and he became a finalist for the White House, The World I Want to Live In Student Film Festival in 2006. Hi. Is it you see me? Yes, we can see you. Uh, where's your camera? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can do You can You can all right, Elizabeth, would you like me to show the artworks now? Sure, and we'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Tanamori's guide dog, Yukina. Hey. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Yukina, come, see. Let you come. Can she come? Thank you. Can she come up? Go to daddy. Oh, come Go here. to daddy. Okay. We want to see you. Up, okay. up, 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 come. up. up. <laughs> I don't know if you can see her. Yeah, okay, it's okay. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen now so you can see some of the artworks. Do you want to say anything about the artwork? Okay, yeah, just back to that was the day of the combined both in Nagasaki and Hiroshima and a tragedy. Okay. This is the one in the bomb shelter before the uh, bombing Hiroshima, August 1st, 1945. I had a vision or a dream, and it was there. I was told that for next 40 years, this is your story for next 40 years, from suffering to the victory. And those are, so you will find some of my writing. And so that's the, yeah. I'm following the light of my heart on the riding uh, the crane, Senbazuru. So the little boy in the blue kimono is, uh, represents Takashi Tanamori when he was eight years old and his favorite aunt made him a blue kimono. So that uh, image of him in the little blue kimono comes up in other artworks as well. Okay. And then, did you want to say something about by the Ten Mile River? The well, we'll do afterwards. Okay. 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 Uh, this is the, uh, we all know that Mount Fuji, it's a famous mountain, is sacred to millions and millions of Japanese. The Fuji, it means the fullness of the samurai mountain. Uh, there are so many different ways to write Mount Fuji, but I take it the one of the fullness of the Samurai Mountain and the Tanimori's lineage belongs to Shogun Tokugawa, the ninth rank, according to the, their historical data. And there's a family crest right here called Maroni. Tachi Aoi. The Aoi is uh, those, the clothes, the shoguns. And we are right there, and the Tanamori stands at a tree. So, anyway, you know, I thought it was a sword, and that's a spiritual Tanamori, this is Takashi Tanamori, and the inscrutable. Uh, product of a history of 1945 because the young boy became a young man who came to America for revenge and they spent four, 
30 some years in America and consumed by revenge against the social injustice, prejudice, racial prejudice, you name it. But the only thing kept me going is the revenge, honor my father's as number one son of a samurai. But anyway, so there I am today in school Reverend Tanimori, however you look at it, my heart changed from revenge to forgiveness. To me, that's the great miracle. The love story a survivor can ever tell from revenge to forgiveness. And my heart is still at the same as the spirit of the sword that you see in the art. The sword is not at the instrumental destruction. It is the spirit of the true samurai. True samurai, the word comes from saburao. The root meaning of the samurai is servant. And I am today given the privilege of serving, to proclaiming the message that peace only comes from a learn to forgive. Thank you. I don't know if people have other questions. You could tell them about your blade okay. of grass experience, which is also in the film. All right, just uh, here I see that by the Tema River. And it was the river that we crossed after we fled, when we fled Hiroshima. I do not know what two days later or three days later, we finally crossed the bridge. I call it Tenma River, but all the bridges are burned. We cannot cross the other side, except this, I call it Tenma River, it's a made up from a human bridge. All the debris, body, dead body, even the living one, push against the pylon of the bridge. And they made crossing the bridge, and I said to myself, strong enough that the, the army tanks can cross. But there my daddy kept my, me in his arms since I wasn't able to walk, I was injured. And the blood dripping all off from the head to the arm, and you name it. So anyway, I remember my daddy each time we step he took, he said, go menasai. Go menasai, please forgive me. He apologized in the stepping over the those bodies. And finally we crossed the other side of the Timma River. And my daddy turned around and looked in the burning city. It was then the first time I said, Daddy, Daddy, what's my mom? What is my baby sister? And my daddy just shook her head. And that's the Timber River I remember, but it is the bridge that linked from the death to life. For those who sacrifice their lives, ten thousands. And those who die, did you know? Those who are able to escape, they were, were the one buried without any ceremonial, burial ceremonial, but that those bodies, those lives were buried tens of thousands including my baby sister, my mother, the countless, became the foundation of Hiroshima today. Hiroshima city is thriving because these people who sacrificed their lives buried. And that's the reason. That was the reason the Hiroshima became the symbol of the, what do you call it? Citadel. Citadel. 
city door of the peace. It's not because of technology, scientific progress, economic progress, all this, but uh, because that foundation. So I say 71st anniversary is so important because that a blade of grass, that this earth has such energy for life. Mm -hmm.